Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Age of Fear the Undead King. We have just completed the Paladin storyline, and we've actually the Necromancer. But first, as requested of me by the developers, we are going to go to the options, we're going to go into the miscellaneous settings, we are going to go to the... Where was it? Experimental features... We're going to do experimental wounds. Hmm, I did I did consider doing all units being able to equip items, but that would take too long and unbalance the game. Battle exhaustion. We're not playing as the undead. So we're just going to... I think we're just going to put the permanent wounds on for now. I don't know about the battle exhaustion. I'd have to do a bit more testing of it. We can have this up. And let us dive in. So, here we go. Here's the rise of the Necromancer. This is the story of the Necromancer of a Necromancer's apprentice, Krill, who will have to traverse many distant lands before he finally finds his dark destiny. We just play it on experienced. I mean, I like the, the higher difficulty difficulties, but I play most games on normal just so that the flow is is enjoyable for you you lords and ladies on YouTube to watch because it's it's not fun watching me having to repeat repeat the same level over and over again. The necromancer's lifeless body lies on the muddy ground, his face twisted into a terrible grimace of death. He was an old man, but still commanded vast power. Krill had underestimated the toughness of his former master. Perhaps the old man's continuous exposure to dark magic had strengthened him. The necromancer had been ferociously powerful. And cold. Very cold. Like the undead. The poison Krill had bought from the swamp which finally brought his master to his knees, though he had thought it wouldn't be enough. As his former mentor had writhed in pain and gasped for breath, clinging to life by a thread. He had cursed the witch for her shoddy poison. He was glad it had worked, for it saved him the trouble of exacting revenge against the hag. The old fool had drawn his last breath, and now it is time to move on, Criddle thought to himself. He viciously kicked the old man's body until it rolled into the fetid swamp waters. Krill had to off his master. The man had no ambition. In fact, outside his knowledge in dark magic, the old man had nothing of value. Krill had learned all he could from him, and simply no longer needed him. What he needed was power. Lots of power. He relaxed his grip on his knife, ready in hand in case the poison hadn't worked. Krill quickly made his way to his old master's cabin in the middle of Shadow Marsh. He searched the cabin thoroughly, there was nothing worth taking. The old man hadn't possessed any gold. Krill gathered some food and headed for the nearest settlement he knew, Mist Mill. So you can already tell the tone of this is very different. We're playing, to be honest, Edward in the previous um, in the previous um, Let's Play videos. He wasn't a particularly great paladin, but Krill seems to be the embodiment of what a necromancer is supposed to be. There seems to be a, m a spelling mistake here. Or a programming mistake here. Also, as you notice, our cursor has changed. It has gone from being a gauntleted fist to being a skeletal hand, which I think is a very nice little touch. Krill was making good time traveling confidently through the swamp when a small band of swamp goblins spotted him. There was no way to escape, as the goblins were advancing on him, and they knew the swamp better than Krill could ever hope to. The goblins reached Krill quickly. The nearest one spoke. News travel fast in swamps, boy. We wait for you. What do you want, goblin? You kill old man. You're right. But me want the things. You, you will get nothing. Run away while you still can. No. I kill you yelled the goblin as he and his gang drew closer. 
Personally, if I'd been in that command, so I just still would have said no and shot him with magic. Goblin, old master dead, you, you give me things. Back off, stinking goblin, you got, you'll got you get nothing, then you die. Krell, your hero, can raise skeletons from fresh corpses. Use the raised dead spell on nearby corpses to fight these pesky goblins. Right, here's Krell. Unit information. Necromancer is a form of twisted, basically, where he's a necromancer, he's got 4 HP, he has soul capture. Which is, it's he's basically like the bog standard um, necromancer that we've met in the Paladin Let's Plays. We've got three goblins we're up against. Everyone is being affected by this, which is the terrain effect, which is swamp. Minus 30% speed, plants, elementals, ghosts, and incorporeal units are unaffected. Muddy ground makes it hard to move. This is a level specific attribute and will be removed after the battle. Um, from my experience of playing the Necromancer campaign, there are a lot more um, a lot more effects in place than there are in um, the Paladin. The Paladin is relatively straightforward. The Necromancer one is a lot more ingenious. Or well, not ingenious. I say it's a lot more um, winding. It, there's a lot more stuff going on. From the grave. Could have raised a couple of skeletons. To be honest, these are bog standard low level skeletons. They're not fantastic. We just need to use them to hold up, hold up the un hold up the goblins. Their answer won't be great because obviously, because obviously, we're massively resistant to projectiles. Not in range. Okay, we'll raise another end. The goblins aren't in rage, range yet. Pull back the skeletons to cover my necromancer. Also, because we're going to get a, I, from my experience, the thing I have found is that with when playing as the necromancer character, you get a lot of units. So, um, right, goblins are resistant to poison. So, it's right. Let's drain magic. We can counteract. Let's counter with the skeletons. <laughs> Still out of range. <laughs> run, run, haha. -ha. How about we play a little? Mm, creepy. Why do we always have to get the creepy people as our characters? Right. Nothing in there. I'm just going to quickly take this opportunity to check. Treasure chest is over there with lots of lovely stuff in it. Anything else? No, unfortunately. We didn't get lucky, there didn't seem to be anything here. Which is a Ooh, there is a nice ring in that chest though. Let's pop some of the What's goblins me? back up. The goblin bones are weak. Well, they'll have to do for now. Okay. Go with your heroes early on the campaign for better loot, of course. Right. Hunt him down. <laughs> Hunt and kill on the archer. There we go. To be honest, it's relatively straightforward. One thing yeah, I have learned is that... Right, and turn... Yep, yep, yep. One of units specific ability to activate from the unit's menu. Basically, he has raise undead. I'm not going to bother to raise all of the undead. All the all the goblins back up because there's no point. Um, we get a Let's lot see. of undead. I'm not kidding. We get like a lot of undead. So there's no point us summoning everything back to life, just because the sheer quantity of them makes it impractical. Ring of 
magic, gold bar, pearl, ring of strength. Right, I think we get XP for killing this. We may not, but I'm just going to try it anyway, I wonder if we do get experience. There's a lot more, like, I found in the Necromancer campaign there's a lot more, like, map, interactive mat map objects than there was in the Paladin. The Paladin was relatively straightforward. Um, there was occasionally stuff like exploding barrels and stuff, or, um... Like, right at the end when you have the fire crystal, but besides that, there wasn't actually that much interactive, like, environmental stuff. In this one, there's a lot more. Right, I'm going to end, end turn. End the battle. The poor creatures didn't stand a chance. They thought Krill was merely another traveler. Krill was no ordinary man. He was a necromancer. As a last goblin tried to escape Cradle's dark powers, the necromancer drained his soul with a mere wave of his hand. The greenskin's lifeless husk collapsed to the ground. Though he had defeated these greenskins with ease, Krill knew that the next group might be more dangerous. He had learned well from his old master, and he knew how to remedy this problem. Krill would secure a party to serve him. The Shadow Marshes were full of death. Many villagers and nobles would enter the marshes, never to be heard from again. They would either drown or meet their end at the hands of the goblins prowling the swamp. Krill knew where to look for corpses. His master had taught him how to find bodies and raise them as undead servants. After an hour, Krill had been able to locate the remains of some drowned men. He started the ritual to begin forming his undead troop. Right, you have no items. You can upgrade some of the units. Got that skirting, got a lot of XP. I what do you want to have him as? Probably as a warrior. Grab this is okay. This is a diff This is the thing I'm going to first point out. You can now see the direct difference between this and the Paladin campaign. In the Paladin campaign, for most of it, we had to pay for our troops, which is where a lot of our money went. In this, we don't have to pay for our troops, but they're going to be of less quality. So, I'm not going to bother grabbing any more of the skeletons. I'm going to switch out my base skeletons with my warriors, because you can only have five, five, and five, um, we can only have five units under our command at the moment, five undead, so I'm going to grab a couple of things. Because we have so many, what I'll probably do is, because we have so many stuff, I won't re re rename them now, though I might... Who did we le lose? Actually, I know what I, will, I do. A, I will quickly just rename the zombies. And this one can be... Chris. This one can be Sergey. And this one can be Dennis. Basically, these are the. Th um, I had had in my previous Let's Play, I had named the developers' characters, and three of them all died in the same battle. On the first battle, actually, they all got ambushed by undead and murdered horribly. I think it's only fitting that they come back as undead. Right, there's Krell. Let's see what items he's got. Right, let's so okay. This is the interesting thing with Gap with um 
with the Necromancer class is that you can equip souls, like items, as one-use items, um, which basically boosts your HP, which is really important because Necromancers are infamously squidgy than being human at all. Alright, he hasn't got any rings. Okay, we can equip the Ring of Magic, equip the Ring of Strength. Alright, there's nothing besides that. I'm going to equip one of the Goblin Souls, just to give myself a slight boost. Right, let's dive right in. So I'm going to take two Warriors, I'm going to take a Zombie to soak up damage, who is going to be Chris. Um... Let's say I, I, I will rename the ones basically under my command right now. Steve 1. I'm just going to give them generic names because we've got to have so many of these guys running about. I won't rename them unless they become particularly famous and he can become... Bob 1. And Bob 2. So we have Steve 1, Bob 1 and 2, and we have Chris. Let us go. Krill couldn't understand why humans would want to live in the Shadow Marshes, but Mistmill was a human settlement set deep in the swamps. The people there fought goblin raids in untenable living conditions year-round. Mistmill was built near Bone River and had several bridges that spanned the murky waters. The only way into the city was to cross one of those bridges, and going through Mistmill was the quickest way out of the Shadow Marshes. Krill knew his undead troop could never enter the city, but his power was continuing to grow and he knew they could be easily replaced. His plan was to approach one of the bridges and attempt to bluff his way into the city. He hid his minions in the shadows at dusk in case he needed their assistance. As Krill approached, one of the bridge guards called to him. Halt! Who are you? Greetings to you, noble guards. I am but a humble traveling merchant. Stop right where you are. Why would a merchant be traveling alone through these doomed swamps? Where are your servants? They left me after my wagon collapsed into a muddy rut on the path. But I assure you that I have friends in Mistmill, and they will gladly help me. You are unfamiliar to me. What is it that you sell? Spices and clothes, sir. Huh. You stink horribly from the swamp. And you claim to have had a wagon filled with clothes and spices? I believe you are lying. I wouldn't dare, noble god. I speak only the truth. Then your friends will need to verify that. Guards, get hold of him! Oh dear. And stay where you are, and you'll not be harmed. But I'm just a humble spice trader, right? And I'm the and, 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 and so right. And my grandma is the queen of Azuroth. Azuroth. Hey, I, you never said that. Trader, trader of death. I kill you all. Right here, one of your enemies carries an item. Yeah, but it's not like we can pickpocket them. Right. What is the damn? The, my plan was to try and lure them in towards the poison cacti, but I don't think it'll work. Right? Has that kind of thing in it? No. Anything in here? No. Ah, there's something in here. Oh, it's interesting. Um, the developers, I realise that the developers have put question marks over over the objects that have items in them so people don't miss them. That's very nice. Thank you very much. That's a very useful thing to have. Right, so they've got two archers. Ugh. 
this isn't going to be a make a massive pain. We just have to pull the necromancer back. Fear me. There we go. And turn. This should be over relatively quickly. The early battles tend to be very, very short things. Right. My warriors, Bob 1 and 2 will, will flank. We've got Chris will soak up damage. And Steve 1 will basically take the take cover. We've got Krill will basically go up behind them. The archers are going to be a pain because they'll probably target my. Um, they'll probably start targeting my zombie, which will be a pain. I can always rise him back, rise him back up if I need to. Right. <laughs> Take him, a hit into him. We can kill him off when he gets closer in. Right, here they come. Time to cause some mischief. I was hoping to anyway. Kill him. Footman, ugh! Send a message to the Seraph, tell him we just die already, roars Krill. Right. Time to tidy skies up. One more spice trader assistant is ready to join us. Right. Right, there we go. Krell, no! I must get life back. Right. Krill is hurt. Quickly, suck the suck the juices from him. Fear me. How can you fail me, you incompetent mage? Fine, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Oh. Right. Go past them and go after them. Is it Bob 2? Bob 2. It's all, all on you, Bob 2. Oh. Ew. Is that a, is it, what the? What's that? Is this an eye? Oh, he's blinded. When did they put blind on people? How did you get blind? Oh, it's the injury system. That's what it is. Ah, I see now. Nicely done. Alright, we can't move these guys. Oh. Let me just chase these guys down and get some health Watch back. Me. I won't attack them, I'll just move up. To be honest, they're just archers, so they haven't actually got that much of a threat. The only annoying thing will be they'll keep moving until they rally. Right, are they in range? No, but I am of them, which is going to be a pain. Well, I'll shove someone right up close to them so they have they won't have any option but to fight. Rise up! My guys are undead anyway, so they're expendable. Right. 
Shinobi. One more good hit and he'll be fully healed. That guy doesn't interest me anymore, just kill him. And then we play the Eternal Cat and Mouse game. No, I do like the little arrow thing, it makes it the life so much easier. Stick him in combat, so if he wants to, he'll have to basically rally. Chris the zombie, very, very useful world. Well done, Chris. Even in death, you, t you seem to be able to be useful. To be honest, I was really sad. I had like all the developers, and I had, they were out on their very first battle, and nearly every single one of them got butchered. I swear it wasn't deliberate. Just out of range. Okay. He's got to move him up there, so he's stuck in combat. If we lose that skeleton, it's no problem. No big issue to me. Right, he's healed up. And Bob won. There we go. Right, someone suggested that I keep an eye out for um, bubbles and waters and stuff because they may have some interesting things. I don't know what they're talking about, but I'm going to try anyway. Fear the dead. While you're at it, Chris, you can try and get some XP. I think this might give you XP. Go and beat up on that particular plant. Seriously, it's a plant. How are you missing a plant? Right. I think that was the only one here. Oh, there was one down there, but I'm not going to have him walk all the way back there. What's this? Abomination. Roar! I am walking again. What will you be your will, master? Rip those vermin to shreds. Yes, master. Oh, awesome! So cool! We got um we got an abomination. Are there more? Can we more raise more people from here? Uh we'll probably just get Let's some skeletons if we raise these guys. Yeah, so I'm not not massively concerned about getting them back. Basically, someone suggested that I look for bubbles of water when they were when I was doing the um, previous Let's Play. So, ooh, potion of swiftness. Dang! Got a lot of stuff. Come, Chris. We have things to smash. Unless you get defeated by the complexity of balance. Well done, you found something really useful. Right. Cool. That's great, we've got an abomination so early on in the game. In battle, we have won. Kirito's undead forces emerged from the shadows and quickly slaughtered the bridge guards. The remaining few begged for mercy, but Kirill has no capacity whatsoever for neither compassion nor forgiveness. A battle call sounded in Mist Mill, which meant reinforcements were on the way. Kirill could hear the soldiers approaching from the distant side of the bridge. Kirill knew he couldn't fight the whole city. He had no choice but to retreat back into the swamps. He had barely hidden in the trees when the kingdom's troops reached the end of the bridge. The troops followed the blood trail and signs of combat and spread out into the swamp. Krill managed to survive the next few hours using his knowledge of the swamp. Soldiers were looking everywhere, but by fate, or perhaps sheer dumb luck, they were unable to find the necromancer's den. Krill waited until dawn before escaping to a safe distance. He realized that he could not pass through Mist Mill now, and had to decide what to do next. And 
here we go. We have a lot more people. We also have an abomination, which is awesome. One of the skeletons has leveled up. I'm going to make him another warrior. You see, we get a lot of stuff for free, which is nice. What I'll actually, hold on one thing. What I'll quickly do is I'll quickly go to Krill. Uh. Can't sell on it. Oh, we can sell stuff. Sorry, the colour change is throwing me off a little bit. Right, we've got some relatively nice gump. Talk, equip talk. We've got on a post elixir of swiftness. So we'll equip that in case of emergencies. We've got an amulet of life. We'll equip that. I'm not going to bother to get a weapon like an axe for him because obviously he doesn't need it. Um, our guys are very well. Ah. Soldier Slayer, well done, Chris. You have done well. Uh, we've got an abomination. I want to give the abomination a, a unique name. So we shall call him. Who was one of my best archers? We lost Lockhill, didn't we? So. Lockhill will basically come back to life as an abomination. After consuming enough human flesh, zombies transform into terrible abominations. What they lack in speed, they make up for the ability to use their huge cleavers to rip the meat from their f from their foes' bones. That's always pleasant. Right, I'm gonna switch the skeletons out for the warriors. I can grab a whole bunch more. What do I want? Probably want to grab another skeleton warrior. The problem is I don't want to grab too many things, like too many um, units, because we'll get a lot of a lot of units just from winning battles. So there we go. None of them seem to have any injuries, which is nice. Grab a couple more base zombies. Skeletons not really interested in. But as you can you can see what I mean, folks, that literally we're on the second mission, we've already got like 19 units. I'm going to make it around a 20 just because I'm superstitious. Um, and this is where we're going to end it for the day. I've been Cornus Knight, and let me just quickly save and we'll jump back to the main menu. Um, we'll save there. I've been Cornish Knight. If you have liked, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Twitter, on Steam, or leave a comment in the comment section as we kick off the new, the second part of our Let's Play of the Age of Fear the Under King, as we are playing as the Necromancer Krill, as along with his undead horde, we try and take over the world. I shall see you all next time. Goodbye.